Hello. Well, good morning, sir. Yeah, good morning. So we'd be starting in a while. Yeah, I, I would. I would also want to share the screen. So. Oh, sure, sir. So, you have disabled the screen sharing. Okay, sir. I'll just permit you. I guess you can share. Is the button disabled for you? Post disabled participant screen sharing. Okay, sure, sir. I'll just check. Yeah. So is that uh, visible? Yes, sir, it is. Yeah. So you can inform whenever you are uh, live. I'll, I'll just another three four minutes, sir, and then students sure. will also join in accordingly. Sure, sure.
फिर से हेलो डॉक्टर रिचा यस मैम आई थिंक वी शुड स्टार्ट बिकॉज ऑन यूट्यूब आल्सो मेनी पीपल हैव जॉइंड ओके फाइन राइट अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू वन एंड ऑल प्रेजेंट हियर आई डॉक्टर रिचा अग्रवाल ऑन बिहाफ ऑफ आई एम नोएडा वेलकम यू इन मास्टर क्लास ऑन मूव्स इट्स आर प्रिवलेज दैट टूडे we have dr ss mantha emeritus professor at vjit mumbai to enlighten us on moocs i would like to welcome shri rajiv kumar gupta president ims noida dr manju gupta dean academics ims noida mrs neerja anand hod school of management all dean and hods of various department faculty members and all dear students for this lesson MOOCs are online courses available to anyone with a computer and internet connection. They offer students a way to learn in setting similar to an online class, but are usually structured and can be accessed without paying tuition or committing an academic program. And in this lockdown, as we all know, MOOCs helped the students in a great way. So to start this session I would like to invite and introduce Dr Manju Gupta ma'am Dean Academics IMS Noida Institute oh, Sir can you Dr. Uh, do you want to yeah. share your screen Dr Richard yeah Yes ma'am Sir I'd request you to kindly unshare the screen so that uh, Dr Richard can share the slides please for a while Thank you, sir. Can you see my screen? Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Manju Gupta, ma'am, is Dean Academics at IMS. She has delivered training on technologies. Like Java, we have loved developments like CDAC, Nisbat, Eris Infotech, Test and Clip, IMS Noida, RG CMS, Wardman Tires, Nirmal Polymers Delhi, Cognizant, WNS Global, GoDaddy, Trimble Solution India, Synergete, Synlet, and too many more national and international participants. She is offering performance-driven leadership. and training experience in the area of it operations business creation team structuring and management build strategic alliance drive distribution successfully managing pnl competitive intelligence project management skills process excellence handle the courses of harvard business school hvp as sap ibm interaction with iima faculty mica and nid professor for innovative teaching practices her key expertise areas are business strategic planning 
business analysis, operations and delivery, industry relationship management, team management training and development, strong interpersonal and presentation skills, leadership abilities, persuasive communication. So I would like to invite Dr. Man Manju Gupta, ma'am, to enlighten us. Uh, Dr. Richard, please continue with Sir's profile. Ma'am is out of town, so her that network connectivity issues there. She will be joining in a while. So meanwhile, we can continue with the lecture of uh, Dr. Mantha. Okay, ma'am, no problem. Doubt his profile and carry on. Yeah. Right, ma'am. Now I would like to invite and introduce Dr. S. S. Mantha Sir. Dr. S. S. May I continue? Yeah, please do. Sure. Um, Dr. S.S. Mantha, sir, is an emeritus professor at VJIT Mumbai. Dr. S.S. Mantha is an eminent academician and an able administrator. He was the chairman of All India Counseling for Technical Education starting 5th January 2012 till 4th January 2015. He specializes in robotics, which he taught more than 15 years out of a rich teaching experience of more than 25 years, along with courses in control theory and artificial intelligence. He implemented the first e-governance project, automating workflows for the Department of Higher and Technical Education, Government of Maharashtra in 1995. He is also a recipient of the fifth National Telecom Award in 2011 for excellence in education through e-governance instituted by CMAI and Star News. He is a member of IET India as part of Engineering Counseling London for whom he is also an expert or creditor. So I would like to invite you, sir, to enlighten us. Dr. Richard, please unshare your screen so that so I can start with this yeah. presentation. So is the uh, screen visible? Sure, sure. Yes, sir. Yeah. So first of all, uh, good morning uh, to all of you. And uh, what I'll do is uh, take you through a few aspects of uh, MOOCs and how it will probably impact the future education. So when I say MOOCs post pandemic, there was MOOCs in some form or the other even before the pandemic started. And we are all privy using some kind of online education in the past. So extending on that, let's look at what we will learn today. I have a little bit of preamble to what this program is about or what this uh, content is about. The technology and the examinations, which actually becomes a part of uh, the learning management system and MOOCs is also a kind of learning management system. The long-term changes, the digital content that is available today in the public domain, what exactly is MOOCs? And then what is cloud-based learning? open online courses as they're available, then all this will need some MOOCs aggregator in the current environment where every institution will not be in a position to invest in the technology, in the IT infrastructure and so on. So therefore you will need some kind of MOOCs aggregator. Then what is blended learning. So what is learning management system that we're talking about? 
then there is a lot of content that needs to be sourced the government of india has swayam which you must be knowing so and there are also private players like coursera edx demi and so on and you will need editors to put all this together and therefore you will need content management systems how do you map essential skills from the employment perspective and a little bit of where industry 4.0 goes and how do we build those certification value added courses for upskilling and so on can it be a part of moocs and finally the universities of the future the virtual universities the next generation labs and having talked of so much of it infrastructure and so on we must also recognize that there is a digital divide and something needs to be done about that as well and finally some references of my talk today so what is the preamble that i have the pandemic will always change the way we live and we must be innovative enough to overcome them education like all other businesses has also been disrupted there are new innovative ways which are required to reach out to students and online education is an alternative there are several other methods but engineering being an applied science everything of that cannot be virtual so we must look at blended learning and what that is there are other facets of higher education like hybrid learning blended is something that i spoke about they mix traditional institutional attendance with laboratory and home instructions and the number of home assignments which you provide add value to the instructional designs so there is something that happens in the within the classroom and there is something that happens online and the value addition comes with the home assignments and the instructional designs that you make now in the past we have had a very robust educational system with almost 1000 universities 45000 colleges and so on they stood their test of time but the gross enrollment ratio never went beyond 25 currently it's about 25 and this has been disrupted because of the pandemic and therefore we have two problems to contend with we have one the immediate and one in the long term in the immediate most of the institutions and universities they have completed at least 80% to 90% of the curriculum mostly online and faculty engage students through online lectures most of the time this is one way traffic monologues with teachers speaking and the other end probably the students listening to that or may, they may not be listening to it as well <clears throat> in the online mode you keep the speakers muted you speak the video you you mute the video and then you do not know whether the other side is attentive at all now though they are the uh, the problem areas but there are methods of overcoming all that and that's what we will see today the best option was to so what was the best option available the best option probably was to aggregate all the good online content from various moocs platforms like for example swayam which is a government of india initiative you also have edx you have coursera and similar platforms 
they are available in both the public and the private domain a lot of content is available there what the institution was expected to do was source the content from those platforms and aggregate them into something that is required within the institution curriculum and the faculty who otherwise would have taught in the classrooms should have ideally handheld or do the hand holding for the students who are using the third party content now coursera also gave a lot of content free some of the other platforms as well they also did give it free till the end of september now some of the people may have used it so they may have had some experience of all that content and so on some of the faculty may have actually helped the students in understanding that content in a kind of interactive mode now all this content and all those technology features they must be integrated with the learning management systems platforms like moodle canvas blackboard or similar so that the data analytics of students and faculty is available data analytics meaning whether the students are attentive for what time were they attentive whether they have understood a certain topic and whether they were there at all whether they are slow learners whether they are fast learners do they need additional material and so on now all this is possible with a typical uh, learning management platform like moodle or canvas or blackboard or similar there are many others now the question is can every one of those 45000 colleges out there and 1000 universities afford to invest in the technology and the content everything comes at a price so therefore if we really look at some kind of moocs aggregator where institutions start collaborating and use a single learning management platform collaborated between maybe 20 30 institutions technically it can collaborate all the institutions and subscribe to the best of the content collectively and make it available on the lms and thereby bring down the cost that is applicable from the student perspective so you will need some kind of moocs aggregator and you will need to collaborate now that's going into the future there are many concerns regarding examinations and so on whether they can be online so on why i, I have brought in examinations here is, is in the final analysis it also becomes a part of your lms the nac and nba they stress a great deal on continuous assess assessments to evaluate the student outcomes now if that be the case why not make continuous assessment as the assessment tool from a student outcome perspective accreditation is mandatory therefore every institution must go through it and your assessment is also continuous which means you are you are assessing a student throughout the semester or throughout the year in addition to that an objective type online examination that's generated from ai based question generators like quillians there are many third party applications which allow you to build question questions question generators and distribute to the student community including the final year students so you have a part of objective kind of questions and you have a continuous assessment which happens throughout the year and therefore the results also can be declared almost instantaneously everything from student learning assessment to entry level candidate assessment can be done online 
And with smart classrooms and learning management systems, it's easy for teachers to conduct interactive learning sessions. Question paper formation, online exams, multilingual support, page navigation, time management, everything is possible. Now, when you go to proving authenticity, people have questions like uh, proxy can uh, actually help students in taking examinations and so on. But that need not be a worry. Where a webcam picks up the profile, students appearing for the exams are verified using biometrics based authentication and so on. So palm print, hand geometry, iris recognition, and retina, all these are available within as features within the examination systems. And they can be proctored, they can, they need not be proctored, and so on. So the learning landscape is changing. We are increasingly finding that we learn as individuals in airline queues, you know, while we are waiting for the flight to begin. In cafes, watching a new virtual you know, video tutorial, in subways, in buses, and so on. So the learning process itself is changing. There is no real requirement of a classroom to learn. And the pandemic has amply proved that there are certain subjects which can be done online. And there are certain subjects which cannot be done online. And therefore in future, probably a lot more will be done online. And a part of that will be done in the classrooms. Like every technology that comes in, it stays back, be it a mobile, be it a, you know, any other internet or any other technology, for example, an automated vehicle and so on. Every technology that has come in, computers, for example, they have all stayed back. Similarly, online education, which has come in where the development cycles have been compressed because of the pandemic, will also stay. And therefore, the teaching learning methodologies will evolve over a period of time now. So they will become short, relevant, contextualized, personalized, and they will be available on mobile devices. Making the entire traditional learning system more or less redundant. But having said that, I, I wouldn't really say that the brick and mortar classrooms will go away. They will stay because they are the, they are the best. It's the le learning or the knowledge acquiring from a student perspective is not the only thing that he does when he goes to the campus. The campus connect allows him several other things besides personality building on the campus, which is not possible in an online environment. There are long-term changes that we will see eventually. Blended learning will become a reality. And all those courses will be credited, whether you take them online or offline in a similar fashion. Probably a 30-70 model will stay in future, 30% online and 70% face-to-face. And continuous assessment will become a part of the assessment methodologies in future. Now here I have some changes, changing trends of educational and the educational digital content. In the context of MOOC, uh, MOOCs, it's all digital content and we must understand what these changes are. <clears throat> there are, the content must be interactive. It must be characteristic. It, it must be mobile based and it must be global and realistic. For example, audio, you know, video, visual medium, the augmented reality, the virtual reality, uh, you know, devices will be used and so on. And the changes in digital content also becomes, also creates an emotional content, emotional connect. Now, 
there are several considerations of future education, which is digital learning in some way. Easy access through various devices is required. Big data management or the learning analytics is required because most of the learning is happening offline. I need to understand whether the student is attentive, whether the student learns, whether he gets the outcomes of a certain unit, whether there is interactivity built in and so on. So big data management becomes a reality. Blended, blended learning is something that will happen. Various digital content sharing and collaboration methodologies will be used. Teacher training is a must and service quality assurance will also be required in future. What kind of quality does the material have? What kind of quality does the delivery have? And so on. So we come to MOOCs, which is massive open online course is MOOC. So there may be more than a lack of students in a MOOC environment. And it's available to anyone, anywhere, can register for these courses. So geographical boundaries don't de define anything. The online coursework is delivered entirely over the internet. Now that's the main feature of MOOC. All the content is delivered online on the internet. And MOOCs are very similar to most online college courses. In the past, you must have gone through some online courses and MOOCs is very similar to that. So therefore, this is a massive open online course and it's a free web-based distance learning program and which is designed for, par for the par participation of large number of geographically dispersed students, which means Boundaries don't matter. Anybody can learn from anywhere on the internet. And MOOC was coined in 2008 by Dave Comia from the University of Prince Edward Island for a course offered by the University of Manitoba. And it's called Connectivism and Connective Knowledge. How do you connect and how do you transfer knowledge? So this. Like uh, we've been saying, MOOCs is any online course and it builds on the engagement of learners who self-organize. This is extremely important because MOOCs does not have a face-to-face -face connect. So therefore it has to build on the engagement of learners. The learners must be extremely motivated and self-organized. If the learner is not organized, if the learner is not disciplined, then no learning happens. Maybe that's true for a student in the classroom as well. But in the classroom, there is a kind of interaction between the teacher and the student. And in an online mode, that doesn't happen. So therefore the learner must be extremely self-organized. And their participation according to learning goals, prior knowledge and skills, common interests, all that becomes very important. Now, what are the advantages? In a typical MOOC environment, there is no tuition fees, but can we really run, run like that? Most of the colleges will become redundant. As it is, there are difficulties in providing the IT infrastructure and so on. So therefore it obviously will also cost. Open access, exposing top level professors at schools that would otherwise be unavailable. You can bring in any professor from any institute, any, like for example, you can have a lecture from Harvard Business School in your environment through the internet. Open courses. Now there are several courses available which are, which are created. The content is created by the best of the professors and is available to you in, from the providers like Coursera or Udemy and so on. So all that is possible. And students also can collaborate with their friends, from with their peers, from the different parts of the world on the LMS. And they can share work, they can criticize, they can receive others' feedback. And there's a lot of interaction that happens online. 
and some professors have found global sharing of knowledge more appealing. In fact, that it's a very easy way of doing things. No traveling, no spending time in you know unnecessary work. A MOOCs program will start at a certain time, end at certain time, and therefore there's a lot of discipline that is required from an individual's perspective. Human beings are not are not disciplined in that sense, in, a, in an automated sense. So therefore, using MOOCs needs a lot of change from a personal, from a human perspective. Now, there are some disadvantages as well. Because there is no connect between the teacher and the student, it's an easy way for students to drop out. And they do not provide active feedback due to large number of students. Though this is not the case anymore with learning management systems, there, there, there is AI being used you to even provide active feedback irrespective of how many students you have. And students, of course, they have to be responsible for their own work and so on. And there can be a number of technical problems, the bandwidth, the connectivity problems, the lack of devices, the cost involved, the remote areas and so on. And there is no real world engagement. It's all on the internet. So how much does a person connect to this? What is the emotional connect? There is a connect when you go to the classroom between the student and the teacher. Now that is absent. So therefore you just cannot figure out whether the students are actively engaged or they are just there on the other side, but the video is muted, the video is muted, the person is doing something else on the other side and so on. But having said that, the artificial intelligence today adds meat to the LMS that we are talking about. Now, there are image, image processing softwares available which can even read the change in the facial expressions which can read the the you know the uh, changes in the in in the uh, uh, eye movements and so on and then actually estimate whether the student is really you know engaged or not interested disinterested and so on so all those things are possible now having talked something about moocs let's see what is cloud based learning. It's again online learning or e-learning that's available in the cloud. Even the MOOCs content can be available in the cloud, meaning that resources are stored in a virtual environment, accessed from various forms of web-enabled devices, which means that I don't need a local storing device. I don't need a hard disk, that big a hard disk. I don't need a lot of application software on my system and so on. But I can source all this from a virtual environment, which means the cost comes down again and which will probably find a lot of favor in times to come because of the digital divides and, and so on. So what exactly is cloud computing? It's the delivery of computing services. What kind of services? That includes servers. I don't need a server to be there in my institution or my house and so on. So the, all these services like, like servers, storage, databases, networking, software, analytics, intelligence, everything is available over the internet, which we term as cloud. To offer faster innovation, flexible resources, and economies of scale, which means personally, I don't own anything, but I get access to everything whenever I need on the internet. And that is cloud services. So what are the advantages? Mobile, it's very mobile, decentralized. You know, I don't, I don't even know where, what exists. I don't know where the server is. I don't know where the services are coming to me from and so on and just-in-time learning. JIT is a Japanese concept, typically used in manufacturing, production, 
houses. So you provide a service when you need it. So you don't invest in that and keep it idle when not in use. So just in service, learning. So I don't, oh, I don't become host to a lot of services, spending a lot of money, but I use those services whenever I need them at a cost. So the cost comes down. So it's very cost effective. And Mark Benoff, you must be knowing, CEO of Salesforce, which is a CRM company. And hello, something has gone wrong. The presentation is not seen. Hello. Yeah. So is that visible? Hello. Sir, it is visible. Yeah. We can see yeah. that. Yeah. So uh, according to him, you have cloud services for companies of all size, which means institutional size also doesn't ma matter. If you had 30,000 students or 3,000 students, it doesn't make any difference. There is redundancy using the cloud include storage of data information across many different services, servers. So it's also not that in a virtual environment also you have one server somewhere, it's multiple servers, multiple sources and so on. So there's a lot of increased collaboration that's possible. Accessibility via mobile computing is possible and so on. Computing on the fly is, is done. So you don't need resources at your end on your mobile, on your PC, but you can outsource all those. You can source all those requirements from a cloud. Now, talking about MOOCs, you have open online courses. There is X MOOCs, which is the most common type of MOOCs organized around a central professor and a core curriculum. You also have C MOOCs, which resembles C stands for connectivity. It resembles a graduate seminar course for students' discussions with the core of the learning coming from student to student interactions. Depending on how so there, are, there are students, there are teachers on the other side, and it depends on how many students, how many teachers, where are they connecting with each other. So depending on that, there are different terminologies like XMOOC, CMOOC, DOCC, which is distributed online collaborative courses in which same core course material is distributed to students at multiple institutions. And books is big open online course, similar to MOOCs, but limited to smaller number of students, typically 50. So I don't have large, large numbers to attend to, but I typically have 50 students or less. You also have synchronous massive online courses where the lectures are broadcast live, requiring students to log in at specific times in order to hear the lectures. Most of the institutions must have used SMOC in terms of the pandemic. SPOC is small private online courses, similar to books, but the students teacher interactions are more closely modeled over traditional classroom. So you create a traditional classroom environment with less number of students and so on. And you also have NOOCs, which is nano open online courses meant to empower learners to learn on the essentials of one competency, skill, or knowledge at a time within 20 learning hours or less. Now the research says that about 17 to 18 minutes is the attention time that you can have of a student in an asynchronous mode of learning which means online learning. So therefore, the content also must be created in that fashion. So you have 15 hours, small module learning, you know, learning modules that are created, which are just about half an hour with 20 learning hours. Then you will start having 
a uh, you know question answer sh- session which is interactive and so on so all that constitutes moocs then you have moocs aggregator in the value network so there are regulations on one side there are universities on the other side or institutions on the other side there are advertisers and sponsors on the other side on the third side and so on so a moocs aggregator t- creates one single learning management platform aggregates all the content over a cloud and makes it available to multiple universities as though each so you create multiple instances or white labeling on the lms that you have and therefore uh, every university thinks that it has the entire network available to itself but in effect it has an instance and the back end is the same for most of the universities now which actually means that you are collaborating on this and the advantage is that the pricing the cost of the program comes down the cost subscription fee per student comes down because now the the sharing is between many more students like 30000 student 50000 students or a lack of students in a subscription model and if you have a subscription model let's say for maybe 2000 students so that's the uh, difference that will be available to you so why should we have online or blended learning blended learning like i said applied sciences cannot be completely virtual so therefore in future you will have blended learning where the hands on experience will be available to people so they blur the lines around what we consider a college easy to get high quality material good online content <clears throat> but a decision will be required in terms of transparency efficiency effectiveness responsiveness agile innovative and so on these are the attributes but in order to have a f- use of these attributes you need a focused decision making there are several models of blended learning they have in in the main you have a rotation model you have a flex model a la carte model enriched virtual model and even within the rotation model you have station rotation lab rotation flipped classroom individual rotation and so on i'm not going into details of all this it depends on different environments that you have when should you have a you know flex model and when should you have an a la carte model it depends on how many students you have what kind of courses you have what kind of networking you want to create whether you want to use the social media you know built seamlessly into your teaching learning model and so on so these are the different uh, blended learning models that we have anyway whatever be the mode the future must be collaboration and which uh, which also is required because there is a rise of real world learning learning must become fun and there must be engaged learning and you know digital learning must go out of lms so it can be accessed with ease and the the devices that you have augmented reality virtual reality devices the head mounted devices and so on they create some kind of connect, emotional connect that is possible and the learning must become must be must be designed like a game like like a video game that you play your content must be designed on that strategy and therefore you you give some postulation you tell them some rule and then you ask them to play it like a game so that in that process they start learning and in in fact if you if you go back in time there was panchatantra which where short stories was were uh, you know taught to children and that is the strategy that we must be going back or the gamification is basically an adaptation of that now as far as learning management systems are concerned this is very very important and learning you know is the delivery management is because there are so many so much of content so many students so you need man and there are so many faculty so you need management of that and all this provided on an e platform for delivery 
So together it becomes a learning management system. There are many available in the public domain, Talent, MS, Moodle, iSpring, Edmodo. These are all, you know, learning management systems that are available and you can purchase or, you know, what a Moodle is a open source. So you can customize that. Canvas is, is a very uh, good uh, learning management system available, but uh, they are all, uh, they have to be purchased. Now Talent MS has a rating of four, four out of five, is a cloud hosted open API. And you can see the number of users. Similarly, Moodle you have, Edmodo, Blackboard. Blackboard is another very popular LMS, is a cloud hosted service and so on. So Swayam, like I said, edX, Coursera, Khan Academy, Udemy, Canvas, Future Learn, Today City, Open Education Europa, they all provide you LMS services along with content. Now, you need a very flexible, powerful editor for what you see is what you get. So this online content business must be properly designed because it's like what you see is what you get. If you see something bad, something that is not effective, then that is what you get. Because you don't have a synchronous mode of learning, you don't have the teacher and student together, you must make what you see very, very comfortable. So that's the challenge that you have. And therefore content management you, uh, systems like HubSpot, Squarespace, Wix, WordPress, they're all very, very useful. In the long term, there are the entire education system will need to transform into facilitating student-centric paradigms. Today, we have faculty-centric paradigms. The faculty decides what to teach and the faculty decides what is the curriculum and so on. So this will change to student-centric paradigms and all the stakeholders will need to retrofit their expectations to the new realities. But the transition from classroom teachers to guides to course mentors is not easy. Today we have classroom teachers. They must become guides. They, could, they should handhold. And in future with online content, they actually have to become course monitors and nothing more. And it does not work if the education supply chain is not in sync with the market requirements. So the employment becomes extremely important and that actually has to drive the systems. There are several future work drivers. They, there is connectivity, modularization, remote work, economy of individuals. All these things are actually planned into an, an LMS and the MOOC content that uh, is designed. So, so most of these things are the future uh, of work. And therefore, whatever we do today, our learning systems, our content, but learning management systems, the, the certification courses available under MOOCs, they all must address the problems that you see in this slide. The next is there are several soft skills required, complex problem solving, critical thinking, creativity, cognitive uh, abilities is extremely uh, important, cognitive flexibility. We must create students who can fit into different environments because the because the environment is changing very, very fast. The jobs that we have today may not be available three years from now. And the, and the content that we are studying today may not be useful for a job that we may get into three, four years from now. So therefore cognitive flexibility is extremely important. Now this is an essential skills map that I have done for, for every vertical like engineering or data science or product or finance, marketing, managers. There are three uh, things that are required. For example, business skills, tech skills, and data skills. These are a must in whichever job, in ever, whichever vertical you go. For example, since you are all management students, let's look at marketing. And marketing as a vertical, I need business skills like digital marketing, digital strategy, social media. 
under marketing i also need technical skills content strategy web analytics and seo and i also need data skills and they will be big data marketing analytics and sql so similar so this slide will actually tell you what kind of skills are mapped and what is the back end uh, value addition that you must create in terms of choosing courses under moocs or any other platform that you have future jobs there is a care economy which will grow there is a green tech which is you know finding it difficult and there are a lot of jobs uh, in data and ai cloud computing sales marketing product development and so on the low skilled jobs are the hardest hit by covid 19 all that you see in red is something that is extremely stressed and therefore the future is all in professional scientific technical skills management skills information education finance insurance they are the skills that are required in future so you all know the world is changing very fast this is a 2020 internet minute what all we do you know almost uh, 2 lakh people are tweeting every single minute internet minute you know 1.1 million dollars spent online and so on so this is a digital around the world in 2019 so many for example you had you know uh, total population you know and the urbanization is 56% of that however the active social media users of 45% of that and so on so these are some pointers to what actually will happen in future this is something the very very simply put on one side there are a lot of devices which can be connected electronic devices for example cameras your pen drives your laptops your mobiles they are all devices and they can, they are connected as internet of things on one side and on the other side you have product innovation process innovation autonomous agents digital networking and the space in between is labor 4.0 so you need skills to drive digitized services you need skills to to uh, you know operate machines which speak to machines you need smart products smart factory so the content that you must get at for your upskilling value added, added courses is what forms in this labor 4.0 <clears throat> chain so there are several roles of emerging technology you have artificial intelligence you have augmented reality iot and so on personalized learning is something that will be the future uh, which means as a student i should be able to select what i want what i have shown you as the skills required or as the iot uh, slide that so the uh, the industry 4.0 slide that i have shown you they are the skills that you require and therefore if you go on to moocs or a content management uh, platform you must look at these courses which make sense to you in your business in your future work for your employability skills and all that put together becomes personalized learning and you must be able to learn that at your pace and give exams at your pace and and so on so all this put together comes to the we come to a concept called universities of the future so so the business models will change the cooperative structures the interdisciplinary uh, nature of learning the new concepts of uh, for faculties or de departments no longer you will have those uh, silos of you know a marketing department or a finance department and hr department and things like that all of them will coalesce into cooperative structures there will be new role for examination houses new teaching concepts massive versus personalized learning and so on so finally all this will metamorphose into a virtual university so what does that mean anybody from anywhere can learn together all the technology that i have spoken about till now put together will give you something called as a virtual university therefore the 
everybody has a role in a virtual university students entrepreneurs technology leaders creators of platforms everyone has a place in a virtual university going forward you will need next generation labs to make sense it's not the aired age old traditional things that you will be keep, uh, that you will be doing you will need access to code labs pop up studios cloud innovation gaming garages market space so any institution which starts investing in these kind of initiatives will make sense in future otherwise they'll probably relegated to also ran so what is the future you will have full fledged online programs leading to certificate diplomas degrees and so on intelligent mix and match of online modules aligned to value added courses for upskilling reskilling and so on targeted specialized courses will be created customer built certification courses will be there blended learning complete online assessment and quality assurance is something that we will have digital divide is something that i have spoken about it has to be addressed there are places where internet connectivity is not there there are people with without smart devices and therefore we must make an attempt to address all that so the uh teachers must be empowered in that uh, space and therefore all that put together is the online education and uh, the future of learning so i have tried to put together a few things uh and maybe uh, there there are of course there are there are a lot of things that can be expanded upon and i suppose you will be doing that these are the references that i have used for my presentation and this this is a place where you can contact me and therefore i stop here stop sharing and return back the control to your institution thank you thank you your your uh, speaker is muted you will have to unmute your speaker sir can you hear me yeah, yeah. yes sir thank you so much sir for enlightening us with such a special information our student and faculty member will get definitely benefited by this thank you very much sir now i would like to invite miss neerja anand ma'am hod school of management to give vote of thanks well thank you dr richa i'll take this opportunity to uh, thank dr s s santha for sparing his valuable time and speaking on a very relevant topic because moocs are something which have been really catching up quite fast and during the pandemic also we have seen that lot many institutions have offered these courses for free i'm sorry sir some connectivity related issues so i'll take this opportunity to once again thank you uh, dr manda for your valuable time speaking on a very relevant topic so looks like a uh, set of uh, many institutions are of these courses across the world they benefit perfect and uh, like uh, the topic which we spoke about whether it would be related the question remains sir that uh, these moocs would be a good replacement for traditional courses that is something which really needs to be seen in future because although uh, there are many universities which are offering these online degree programs mba programs they are offering but uh, we still have to see what kind of recognition these courses are going to get so but yes future as you just uh, showed in uh, your slides that the future looks quite promising and uh, we might have a lot of virtual universities 
but uh, sir that also pops up one question are the institutions going to see their downfall in student enrollment in the near future because of these open courses so in the in the short run maybe there will be a difference but uh, i don't think that that will happen as a as a rule the uh, student enrollments in the brick and mortar institutions will certainly be there i don't think there is any any real concern on that but the teaching learning process will undergo a change with some amount of blended learning happening for real uh, as far as uh, uh, the uh, you know the effectiveness and uh, pro of the programs are concerned uh, there is no replacement for a good teacher now having said that the best teaching probably will happen in still happen in a classroom where you have a teacher you know student interacting with each other and the best learning will happen on a campus because like i said learning is not only trying to understand a certain coursework there is there is a lot of other learning that happens on a campus so when you go to college you interact with uh, your with your friends with your faculty with your elders and so on so there is a kind of uh, conflict resolution that happens on the campus there is a kind of understanding different cultures different you know uh, people uh, that takes place on the campus and all that is a part of learning it's not just learning the basics of uh, let's say some hr or marketing practices or something like that so therefore a campus one cannot replace the brick and mortar institutions will always be there and they'll continue to be there but probably there is it's is time to relook at the kind of teaching learning paradigms that we are using within those institutions and the the cost has been going up prohibitively within the institutions that we have today that's probably because we have we have to spend for the salaries of the faculty the providing the infrastructure providing the uh, other benefits that are that are required and not i'm not making a case that that should not be done that will have to be done but having said that probably the mode of teaching learning can be made more effective if you have a good uh learning management system which can give you the the which can aid you in student analytics finding out who is good who is bad or who is lacking on a certain to topic and and generally seeing that the, uh, the the students are better off in terms of uh, learning so technology must be used to enhance the teaching learning quality rather than replace the entire system and uh, go over to something else that should not happen and i don't think it will happen sure sir thank you so much sir for answering that query and i'm sure the student must have gained a lot of insight and uh, i'm sure the enrollment might also go up after listening to your lecture and after listening to your session so thank you once again sir and it thank was a pleasure having you and speaking on a very relevant topic thank you my pleasure thank you so much sir students i have shared the attendance link in the chat box you can mark your attendance there so with this i'll end the meeting sir thank you thank you thank you thank you so much sir the students who are in the group or uh, chat box there is a link you can mark your attendance i'll paste the link again okay those who have not filled they can fill in and mark their attendance so i'll take 5 minutes and then i'll end the meeting